Um, my name is Osprey Oyer Lake, and I'm with the Women's Earth and Climate Caucus, and we've also recently formed the Women's Earth and Climate Action Network, which the acronym is We Can. And we're starting off on a, a positive note that we can do some of these things we're setting out to do. Um, and I'm going to be talking about women um, in relationship to, to both climate and also rights of nature. Um, but before I do that, I really want to acknowledge some of the other women in the room who also could be sitting here and speaking as well. Gloria, who um, I'm glad has been speaking out here some, who's also working with women we heard yesterday on the front lines, um, which I think is really important that we acknowledge you know, that their lives are at stake and here we are in their country and I really want to, to recognize the women of Ecuador. We have Casey Camp uh, Hornick who is from North America representing a lot of women there on the front lines with the tar sands and many, many other issues in your community. Um, also, uh, the women of the corn, um, it, um, the woman that was there is not here right now. Um, also, I want to acknowledge uh, Carmen Caprillas from Bolivia, who's been um, advocating um, in, at the local level, but also very strongly at the United Nations. Uh, that's one of the things that we do, even though that process is very difficult. Um, it's important that uh, gender issues and women are really well represented in climate policy. So uh, it's an arena we also operate in. So. I want to talk about um, why women are really important as a constituency. Um, we know women are really important in a lot of ways, so um, we could go on and on spiritually about the importance of women, but I want to talk about some practical details so that when we get into the, to the issues around rights of nature and also the climate, we understand where women are of such terrific value and in many ways um, unseen and unheard in the way nature is as well. And we know there is a deep historical relationship between the violation of women and the violation of the earth that goes back thousands of years. And I think it's one of the reasons this call to rights of nature is so powerful, is that we have been silencing the voices of women and silencing the voices of nature. And we can see the end result in our current modern day societies. Um, why are women so important? It's, um, some of you might know that in most uh, developing countries, between 60 and 80% of all household food production is done by women. And as Vonigda can tell you very well, who is holding on to the seeds, who's collecting the seeds, who's been caring for the seeds, it's the women. And I see this across so many indigenous uh, cultures as women caring for the seeds. Um, when we look at water issues, many, many studies have been done by the United Nations and others, and if you go into different countries to try to help with water issues, if you don't involve women, none of the programs work because women are the ones collecting the water, they're watching the seasons, they're caring for their children. So we really need to remember how much we're talking about rights of nature on the ground level and really respecting the laws of the earth and the natural laws. We need to speak to the women who are intimately engaged in those natural laws. Um, when we look at issues that are very key to living well with the earth, I'm trying to avoid the word sustainability a little bit, uh, living in a good way, buen vivir. Um, when you look to uh, different places all over the world, whether in developed countries or in the developing world, we look at three issues that are really important, like population, how economies are balanced and stable, and the health of our children. In all those cases, when you empower women through jobs and education, all of those arenas improve. And I think we need to bring in the topic of population when we talk about respecting the natural laws of the earth. Because with a lot of these issues, when we're talking about over extraction, when we're talking about the global north uh, basically devouring so many of the communities of the global south, not all of it is driven by this, but we also have to look at the fact of overpopulation. And one of the things that we're seeing is the tremendous need to balance and stabilize our populations. And the key to that always and the success of that is empowering women. Because we have to be able to stop extracting, stop using up all of our water, and the whole list of things of minerals in our forests. We need to see what our Mother Earth's caring capacity is and honor and respect that as part of the natural laws of the Earth and rights of nature that we need to respect. I also want to bring forward um, something else that's very interesting about women. And uh, in September of uh, 2013, so just several months ago, our organization put together a very large uh, international conference 
in New York with women leaders from around the world. And it was a holistic view on climate change and our relationship to nature and with the earth. And Wanina was there and Shannon was there and uh, a lot of our indigenous sisters, Casey was there and uh, Carmen was there, uh, Atosa from Amazon Watch was there. Um, and we really worked to bring a holistic view by having um, an equal number of grassroots and indigenous women leaders together with high policy makers. Uh, um, we had uh, Mary Robinson, the former president of Ireland there. We had uh, Christiane Figueres from the UNFCCC. We had um, uh, uh, so many women from uh, different countries, leaders that Jane Goodall was there to really talk about how we can get at the systemic issue that we're talking about today. And I just want to focus on one area because time is short. 80% of all consumer purchases in uh, North America are decided by women. That's a huge power of the purse that women have, 80%. So it was very important for women of the global north to be hearing about the struggles of their sisters in indigenous communities and grassroots communities on the ground and how lifestyle and worldview is deeply impacting other communities. That conversation is really key to moving the dial as far as I'm concerned on climate change and on rights of nature because as we have been having in these discussions, um, we are dealing with this vicious cycle of Pablo brought it up yesterday of you know the relationship between governments, corporations, extractive industries, and the consumer. So we think it's very important to engage women in this really important issue. And last night I just had this cra uh, crazy thought, which I don't think it will go anywhere, but we're always hearing sort of from right-wing speakers in our country, in the US, around you know the war on terror, and the war on this, and the war on that. I said, okay, well, let's have a war on consumerism. We should stop consumerism. And um, I think this is an important thing, is as we're talking about you know, creating these new narratives that some of you have spoken about today and having a bigger worldview, one of the things that we're doing in these women's networks is talking about a new cultural narrative that is not based on extractivism, is not based on taking, but is on giving and understanding a whole new value system that we can learn so much from indigenous peoples around how we have reciprocity, how you don't take more than what you need, how if you take, you also need to give back. And I think that it's really important that we understand uh, that this holistic framework is really what's going to move us forward. We need to talk to people in many different sectors. So in closing, yeah? Okay, so in closing, I'll just leave you with one of the things that we have found very valuable in these networks because uh, we find that, um, First of all, we've been able to really introduce rights of nature to a lot of women's networks that have never even heard about rights of nature, and we're really encouraging them to adopt that into the work that they're already doing. So we're based on four rights because we're a rights-based organization, and those four rights are women's rights, indigenous rights, rights of nature, and rights of future generations. And we're finding that by weaving these four rights together, that it's really encompassing a very holistic view to move forward for systemic change.